Welcome to the House of Belthorian. Um, today, I am going to talk about VR, uh, my personal settings that I use in Flight Simulator 2024, uh, and the hardware I have, and maybe it will help some of you get better performance uh, through, you know, in your VR experiences in the Flight Sim. Uh, starting off, I use a uh, virtual desktop. I have a MetaQuest 3 and um, I have it, you know, connected now for streaming. This is, you know, what you see in your headset. I've got my VR bit rate uh, maxed out. I was going to say I use godlike settings. Uh, I keep my VR frame rate down at 72. And the reason is, is I don't really... <sighs> I don't notice any difference in clarity uh, or anything like that with the higher frame rates for flight sim. Um, and you know, the, the more you increase your refresh rate, the more computing power it needs. So uh, I get an absolutely acceptable performance at 72 hertz. And I would rather have you know more overhead for FPS than... Um, than whatever the higher refresh rate does for you. Now, if you're doing, you know, incredibly, you know, games like fast games, like iRacing and things like that, that, uh, you know, you might need a higher frames per second. I can understand that. But for Flight Sim, I find 72 frames per second perfectly acceptable. And uh, that's what I use. Now, the, I am connected via Wi-Fi 6. So I have a 6 gigahertz connection at 2401 megabits per second. So uh, the wireless connection is absolutely uh, outstanding. And so if you have an older you know, Wi-Fi system where you're only connecting at you know, Wi-Fi 3 or whatever it was before that, uh, you know, I definitely recommend getting a Wi-Fi 6 router. Um, the, like I said, the amount of clarity uh, is incredible um now the that's how i connect my quest 3 to my pc for vr now within vr or i mean excuse me within microsoft flight sim uh let's go to our settings now uh if we go to graphics here is where i think uh you know a lot of i've never seen anybody else really say for in your general settings under graphics under pc this is what the pc what you see on the pc screen i turn everything off i cut it down is you know i have no dlss you know i put it at 1920 by 1080 um you know i turn anti-aliasing off i actually turn my render scaling way down no frame gen nothing um under uh my advanced settings i literally crank everything as low as possible or off uh this has absolutely no bearing on what you see in the simulator and doing this will free up a massive amount of overhead for vr so you know give it a try cut you know turn all these settings down and notice how much smoother and how much more FPS you'll get in your VR setting. Now, under VR, VR graphics, I go with DLSS uh, as my anti-aliasing method. Now, under my resolution, I go with DLA, or Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing. There are many different, you know, there are quality, balance, performance, ultra performance. All those are, are different levels of downscaling you know so you have your headsets native resolution which forgive me i can't remember what the quest threes is right off the bat um the uh and so every one of these like qualities like downgrades at 10 percent. you know balanced is 20 performance is you know 40 ultra performances downscaling at 50 percent DL, DLAA offers no downscaling whatsoever. So you will have no degradation of your image at all. 
Um, AMD, Fidelity FX sharpening. I'll be honest, like I don't notice anything one way or the other using this. Um, it defaults to a hundred. Um, I'll, I guess, leave it there. Uh, I don't use reprojection mode. Don't need it. Um, I turn uh, low latency on. I do turn dynamic settings off. I don't want that. Now my terrain level of detail, I keep it 100. Off screen uh, terrain pre-caching, I keep it medium. Um, I like my buildings at ultra. My trees, plants, rocks are all medium. My grass is low. Objects level detail 100. Uh, clouds are at high. Now texture resolution, I leave it ultra. Now, what's interesting is when you, you know, this is the one thing that when you change, you have to restart the sim. I tested extensively between high and ultra, and I did not see any FPS impact at all. So, you know, I'm going to go with ultra. Uh, Anti-isotropic filtering. I have it off here because I have it hard turned on uh, in the NVIDIA control panel uh, at 16. Texture super sampling uh, 8. Um, water waves are at high what's interesting is you you know in vr i even though i have a rtx 4090 um i cannot turn on ray trace i don't know, maybe ray trace shadows aren't in vr i don't know um shadow maps and terrain shadows you know they're sort of at a medium setting contact shadows media i like my wind you know i like the windshield effect so i bump that to high uh, ambient occlusion medium cube matte reflections are you know, a, a middle value <laughs> or they, actually they would be not middle but they would probably be high considered high uh, ray mark uh, reflections medium light shafts medium glass cockpit refresh rate medium character quality um, I, I, you know what's funny is I'm actually going to Turn that to low. Uh, after your airport traffic quality, um, I'm actually going to set that to low. Air traffic is ultra um, because the it says it adjusts the density quality and display. If, you know, for aircraft in the air, I want that the highest. You know, the stuff at the airport, I don't care because you know I'm only there when I'm landing and taking off, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, I do like to see lots of cars going on, so I've got that at high. I've got the ships uh, set to high, and fauna I've got set to high. Now, my my hardware. Uh, I got this computer originally back, you know, when Flight Sim 2020 was pr pretty new. So I've got a, an AMD Ryzen 7 uh, 5800X3D. Uh, I've got 64 gig of RAM. I've got the RTX 4090 uh, video card. Um, I was going to say, I don't know if I'm going to upgrade anytime soon. Uh, the performance I get within the sim, and this is really the only game I play on a regular basis. But, uh, you know, this is the, the quality of, you know, of what I get in here is pretty darn good. So I don't really... I don't really see why, you know, why I should upgrade. Now, um, let's go ahead and jump into the sim. Let's go to London. Now, for internet, too, I do have a 2.5 gigahertz, uh, 2.5 gig or gigabyte, excuse me, uh, fiber connection. And so I, I do have, uh, you know, really, really fast internet. All right. So what's funny is, so on the PC screen here, you can see how you know it looks City like Tower, Diamond Golf. because once again Sierra this Whiskey, has no bearing of what i'm going to see in vr 27. so let's hit ready to fly now let's go ahead and you know, once again like i said looks like butt let's go ahead and jump into vr
Okay, so here we are in VR, and you know, notice, boom, picture is phenomenal. And then, oh, hold on, let me switch, bring my joystick over. Now, for my flight controls, I use a Win Wing Orion 2 Hodos. And I've got uh, a very old, old, old pair of you know, Logitech rudder pedals. And so those would be my flight controls. I, you know, what's funny is I do have the Logitech yoke. I've got a radio panel, switch panel, and autopilot panel. I never use them anymore. I really don't because in VR, you can't really see them. And so, um, you know, to me, the, the Hodos is more than acceptable. And so, you know, here's just a quick look on the outside through VR. And like I said, picture is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely crystal clear. Now, the, you know, on virtual desktop, when you set it to godlike, it, it's giving me 150% resolution of what the the uh, native resolution of the Quest 3 is. So uh, when you compare, you know, 50% higher resolution in the pancake lenses in the Quest 3, the view, like I said, it is unbelievably clear. Um, I did have an HP Reverb G2. Uh, that was my primary VR headset I used in, in 2020. And um, I wanted a second VR headset because, you know, the I, I do a lot of big screen and I wanted to be able to watch movies and things like that not tied to the computer. And so I, you know, I tried the Quest 3 and Flight Sim and it was light years better than the HP Reverb G2 as far as image quality and clarity. It is Un, you know, unbelievably better. Is it a worth? Is it worth it to upgrade from a Reverb G2 to a Quest 3? In my opinion, 100% yes. All right. Now, you know, London, the reason why I picked London is um, London was particularly brutal on uh, in-flight sim 2020. Uh, you know, the frame rates here were always, you know, iffy at best. And, I mean, it is right now, it is absolutely silky smooth. Diamond Golf, Sierra Whiskey Charlie Kilo Frequency Change. Big and approach Diamond Golf. Sierra Whiskey Charlie Kilo is type Diamond DA 621 miles southeast of Echo Golf, 6 Oscar X-ray 100 feet. Request flight following. 
Diamond Gulf. Sierra Whiskey, Charlie Kilo, big in approach. Squawk 6717. Squawk 6717, Diamond Whiskey, Diamond Charlie Whiskey, Kilo. Charlie Kilo, radar contact, one mile southwest of Echo Gulf 6, Oscar X ray, 100 feet. QNH 1013. Roger Diamond Whiskey, Charlie Kilo. Now, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is I am using OpenXR. Um, my OpenXR settings are, let's go, boom, FPS. I don't use any upscaling. I don't see any benefit to it. Um, I do have fixed foveated rendering set to preset mode quality pattern wide. No frame rate throttling. Um, I don't. I have post processing turned off. Uh, Going to one two five. I have my shaking reduction set at negative thirty. Kilo. Uh, override revolution resolution. No, you know. I don't. Yeah, I have to disable the mask, which is good. That's the round thing. But I really don't have a lot of settings in uh, OpenXR. I, I basically the. I wanted the open XR is just the method of translating VR and then I do like you know the fixed foveated rendering I do notice a a big uh, a, a good you know jump in performance doing that and you know the way I have it set up like you I do not notice like any of the little that squiggly circle you would normally see yeah you know, the way I have it set up uh, it is 100% unnoticeable the way it is currently Big set up, and golf. it provides me a, Whiskey, Kilo, like I said, a decent uh, jump in frame rate performance. So Whiskey, now, Charlie, you know, here I am, you know, flying, like I said, in one of the most, in, you know, FPS intense Whiskey, areas, and, Kilo, you know, I'm getting 38, 37, 38 frames per second. Uh, sometimes it'll dip low, but... Going to one two five decimal eight seven five diamond you know, whiskey charlie. When I'm Kilo. flying around, it, you know it, you know everything. Just it looks, it feels smooth. It is very clear. And like I said, I could not be happier. Now you know I. When I'm out, uh, like traveling around, you know, in the Grand Canyon and other areas where there's, you know, not much urban activity, you know, my frame rates jump up into, you know, the 40s and sometimes low 50s. But, you know, all in all, I am like I said, very, very satisfied. I hope. Big and approach Diamond Golf. Sierra Whiskey uh, Charlie Kilo 300 feet. I hope this video, Diamond you know, Gold. maybe gave Sierra you some Whiskey ideas uh, in, approach, you know, one. areas of where you might be able to tweak to improve your own VR performance inside Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Um, hey, leave your comments below. If you have any suggestions or if it helped you at all, let me know. Um, like and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, everybody have a wonderful day.